This is the story of Narumi Kurosaki, a young Japanese student who came to France in search of a brighter future, but instead met a tragic end. It's a case that has captivated the world, and today we'll dive deep into the details to uncover the truth behind this heinous crime. Get ready to join us on a journey of mystery, intrigue, and justice as we unravel the case of Narumi Kurosaki. Narumi was born and raised in a cozy family of five, with her parents and two younger sisters. After attending Tokyo Metropolitan Kokusai High School, she packed her bags and jetted off to France at the tender age of 21 to further her studies at the University of Franche Comte. She was determined to succeed, and nothing could stop her from achieving her dreams. Little did she know, her journey would take a dark and twisted turn that would leave her family and friends in shock and despair. Nicholas, on the other hand, was born into a prominent Chilean family of three children. His father was a big-shot executive at the telecommunications provider Movistar, while his mother worked as an engineer and also dabbled in politics. He grew up with his twin sisters, Belen and Josefa, and attended Colegio Centenario until 2008, when the family moved to Antofagasta and later to La Serena. Nicholas was a bright student and studied administrative sciences at the University of Chile with aspirations of building a successful career. Now, Rumi and Nicholas met at a party on the campus at the University of Tsukuba, and their love story began to unfold. As their relationship blossomed over the following months, they embarked on an adventure to Chile, where Nicholas introduced Narumi to his family as his beloved partner. It seemed like the start of a fairy tale romance. After his university year ended, Nicholas had to leave Japan, but he couldn't stay away from his love for long. In April 2016, he returned to Japan with a single purpose, to find work and start building a future with Narumi. But Narumi had bigger plans. She left for France in pursuit of higher education, and the pair broke up shortly afterwards. When did they break up? It's simple. Narumi fell in love with another man, Arthur Del Piccolo. To Narumi, this was just a normal breakup, but to Nicholas, this marked the start of a very sinister journey. It was just like any other Sunday for Narumi Kurosaki, who attended her dance class and left around 4 p.m. However, that night something sinister occurred that shook the residents of the building where Narumi was staying. At around 3.20 a.m., the stillness of the night was shattered by piercing screams and a loud thud that echoed through the halls. Rachel Hope, a British student, was so terrified that she sent a panicked message to her friend about hearing something that sounded like someone being killed. Another student, Nabil Drissi, tried to investigate but was unable to determine the source of the sounds. The following day, when Narumi's classmates realized she hadn't shown up for class, they knew something was wrong, as they knew Narumi was never one to miss class. As they became increasingly concerned about her absence, rumors began to circulate about the strange noises that had been heard in the building the night before. Everyone wondered if there was any connection between Narumi's disappearance and the frightening events that had occurred. The air was thick with tension as investigators tried to piece together what had happened to Narumi. The mystery of Narumi's disappearance was only beginning, and the questions were mounting. What had happened to Narumi, and why was there such an eerie silence where she once stood? The days following Narumi's disappearance were filled with worry and confusion for her family and friends. They received text messages and messages from her phone, claiming that she had passport issues and needed to go to the Japanese consulate in Lyon. Her bank card was even used to buy a train ticket to Lyon, but the passengers on board claimed to have not seen anyone who looked like Narumi. As if that wasn't enough, more messages were sent to her relatives, saying that she had a new boyfriend and was going on a solo trip. But the messages stopped coming after December 12th, leaving her loved ones in a state of distress. Finally, on December 14th, the Center for Applied Linguistics and Bezenson raised the alarm, and the police entered Narumi's room on December 15th. 
It was then that the gravity of the situation hit the investigators, and they initially focused their suspicions on Arthur, Narumi's new boyfriend. During the interrogation, Del Piccolo, Arthur's friend, mentioned Nicolas Zapata Contreras, Narumi's former lover from Chile, painting him as a jealous and possessive man who even hacked into Arthur's Facebook account. At first, this information didn't seem important because of the distance, but thanks to the geolocation on Narumi's phone, investigators discovered that she had been in a restaurant on the night of December 4th, and her bill was paid using a Chilean bank card. The investigation took a dramatic turn, and all eyes were on Nicholas as a suspect in Narumi's disappearance. The case against Nicholas Cepeda Contreras, the ex-boyfriend of Narumi Kurosaki, is as damning as it is disturbing. French prosecutors allege that Zapata flew into a jealous rage after learning that Narumi had moved on and entered a new relationship while studying in France. Their investigation has uncovered evidence suggesting that Zapata bought flammable materials including matches and bleach from a supermarket on his way to Besançon. While he returned his rental car three days after Narumi's disappearance, investigators found soil on the driver's side and in the trunk. As if that wasn't enough, mysterious messages continued to be sent from Narumi's phone for several days after she vanished, including some in Japanese. A friend of Zapata's even told police that he had asked her to translate sentences into Japanese, which later appeared in one of the messages sent from Narumi's phone. But what about Narumi's room, though? There must be some evidence there. The police entered Narumi's room on December 15th around 5.31 p.m., and to their surprise, it was completely neat and tidy. Her friends were quick to point out that this was unusual as Narumi was known to be a bit of a messy person. Upon closer inspection, the police found several troubling signs. Narumi's only coat, despite the fact that it was chilling winter, was left behind, along with her laptop and wallet containing 565 euros in cash. But the most alarming thing was what was missing. A blanket, a suitcase, her passport, and her phone were all gone. As the police took inventory of Narumi's belongings, they realized that they were dealing with something much bigger than a simple disappearance. The fingerprints found on a cup in the room belonged to Nicolas Cepeda Contreras, who had been seen with her just days before. The French police knew that they had a suspect, but they had no idea just how dangerous he was. From DNA analysis, they discovered traces of Zapata's DNA on a water bottle, a t-shirt, the walls, the bathroom floor, and the edge of the sink. It was clear that Zapata had been in Narumi's room, and he had left behind a trail of evidence. But that was just the beginning. The police also found samples of Narumi's blood on the emergency door, which Zapata had used as he exited the building. It was a chilling hint towards the violence that had occurred in the room just hours earlier. As the investigation continued, more and more troubling details emerged. Narumi had entered a new relationship in France, and his jealousy had clearly driven him into a violent rage. In a video he had sent to Narumi just days before her disappearance, he had given her an ultimatum. Bend to his unspecified conditions within two weeks, or else. On September 5, 2016, Narumi Kurosaki received a text message from her boyfriend, Nicholas Cepeda Contreras, asking her to delete some of her contacts on Facebook. But Narumi's response is a firm, I will never delete Arthur. Fast forward two days later, and Nicholas posts a disturbing video on Daily Motion where he talks about Narumi in eerie terms. He says she needs to, quote, pay a little for what she has done, and follow certain conditions during her stay in France, or else he will, quote, enforce these conditions with immediate effect. Yikes. Sounds like a scene from a thriller movie, doesn't it? But wait, there's more. Juan Felipe Ramirez Contreras, Nicholas's cousin, who spent five days with him in Barcelona before he returned to Chile, revealed some pretty worrying details about their conversations during this stay. Nicholas had hidden his meeting with Narumi and Besançon from his cousin, claiming he was in Europe to attend a conference in Geneva. He even asked Juan, who was a medical student, about death by suffocation. Talk about creepy. But perhaps the most unsettling detail of all of this was the way Nicholas referred to Narumi in the past tense. 
During one conversation, he said, quote, Narumi really liked the sea. Was he implying that she was no longer alive? It's a bone-chilling thought. It was a long and winding road to justice for Narumi Kurosaki, who went missing in 2016 in France. Fast forward to April 2019, and a team of French investigators led by the investigative judge, Manteau, flew all the way to Chile to interrogate the one and only suspect in her murder, Nicolas Cepeda Contreras. They had a total of 95 questions for him, but to their dismay, he chose to remain tight-lipped and silent. The French legal team knew that they had to come up with a game plan in case the extradition failed. They considered transferring the court proceedings to Chile, or trying him in absentia, in France. The stakes were high, and they couldn't afford to let justice slip away. Fast forward to July 2020, and Cepeda's extradition to France was finally authorized by the Chilean Supreme Court of Justice, and he was transferred from his house arrest in Viña del Mar to Santiago de Chile Airport to be handed over to French authorities. The Great Trial of Nicolas Cepeda Contreras started on March 29, 2022, in the Cour de Assises of Dubs Besançon. With the case having an international scope, the trial was extraordinary and had a jam-packed schedule. To account for the time difference between France, Japan, and Chile, three clocks displayed the respective times in each country. Not only that, but video conferencing technology was used to hear the testimony of many witnesses from abroad, including ten from Tokyo, two from Santiago de Chile, and one from Scotland. Besides the main courtroom, two other rooms were open for the public and journalists to follow the debates broadcast on a giant screen. It was a case that had everyone on the edge of their seats. Nicolas Cepeda Contreras, the defendant, was represented by the seasoned lawyer Mater Jacqueline Lafont, with Mater Julie Benedetti assisting. Mater Lafont had previously defended big shots like former French President Nicolas Sarkozy and former Minister Nicolas Hula. Meanwhile, Narumi Kurosaki's family was represented by Sylvie Galli, a lawyer from the Besançon Bar Association, and Mater Randall Schwerdorfer, a lawyer from the same association, joined the civil party representing Narumi's boyfriend at the time of her disappearance, Arthur Del Piccolo. The trial was presided over by Matthew Husson, president of the criminal court, and the advocate general was Etienne Mantel prosecutor general of Besançon since September 2018. Humberto Zepeda and Ana Luz Contreras, Nicolas Zepeda Contreras' parents, as well as Teiko and Kurumi Kurosaki, Narumi's mother and sister, were also present in Besançon to follow the two weeks of the trial and testify there. One crucial piece of evidence presented during the trial was Zapata's blogspot page, where he often shared stories about his relationship, presented as fictional works. Zapata was also active on various online forums, such as Smule, Last.fm, and DeviantArt, where he posted various Japanese-style drawings. However, French authorities claimed that intercepted private messages between Narumi and Zepeda on social media showed Zepeda to be jealous and possessive, which could indicate his involvement in her disappearance. The jury consisted of nine individuals, three men, three women, and three magistrates. They all carried equal vote and took their job seriously. The jury deliberated for a few hours, and in the end, they found Contreras guilty of murder. It was a moment of closure for Narumi's family and friends, who had waited years for justice to be served. On April 12, 2022, Contreras was sentenced to life imprisonment, which in France is a 28-year jail sentence. Justice has finally been served, but the scars of this tragedy will never fully heal. He was expected to serve the first 15 years in France, and after that he could be extradited to Chile to serve the remaining 13 years. What do you think about the case? Did Nicolas Cepeda get what he deserved? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe.